time for the after show and I'm Will Aubrey. Joe Darnell is here with me and today on the Improbability Engine after show we're going to talk about science fiction TV series our favorites over the years and uh, you know what I'm thinking Joe? No. Neither do I. <laughs> 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 as, we, as we sit here on Towel Day, you cannot start your Towel Day without a quote like that. That's just fantastic. Hitchhiker's got Guide to the Galaxy. And uh, it started out as a radio show on BBC Radio in the 1970s. And you're in luck because some hoopy frood uploaded the audio <laughs> from all of that to YouTube so you can Google it or actually go to YouTube and do the search and you'll you can find the episodes from the old radio show uh, it was also a TV show uh, that was on BBC and it was also broadcast on PBS in the United States uh, it's science fiction it's comedy it's absurd and hilarious and uh you know and it's towel day so we celebrate it in douglas adams and if you're wondering about towel day the towel is the most important thing that a, a hitchhiker can carry along because if you find yourself say in a crater on pluto you can use the towel to cuddle up in for warmth okay if you find yourself um, on trawl Confronted by the bug bladder beast, you can wrap it around your head because the bug bladder beast, when it sees you like that, will assume, hey, if it can't see me, I must not be able to see it. And that will protect you. They're really the stupidest animals in the galaxy. They are. They really are. <laughs> oh, so as we talk about science fiction television, we have to kind of understand, and this is kind of a follow-up on our science fiction movies that we had talked about earlier, um, but it, it kind of goes back to what we talked about. The greatest p aspect of science fiction television, or science fiction in general, is it's so reflective of the human condition. Um, it uses weird premises to shine a light on the realities that we see today. Um, and as a sign of that, I'm going to put forth my first science fiction television show. Now, some might argue this isn't science fiction or it's not purely science fiction, but it's science fiction. Um, and that's The Twilight Zone. To okay. me, The Twilight Zone is, it is to television what the short story was to literature. Yes. Um, it is powerful. They were, they were impactful. They were, uh, on a human scale, self-deprecating. They were great vignettes on the reality of mid-century America. Uh, the monsters are due on Maple Street. All it was was the aliens turned off the power. We're the monsters. What a fantastic premise that is. It's so good. Oh, it's just fantastic. What's your favorite, what's your favorite Twilight Zone? Oh, wow. I have to think about that <laughs> think for about a it. moment. Yeah, think about it. That's uh, a good... I was just going to talk about whether or not it's science fiction. And the truth is, many episodes are undoubtedly right. science fiction. You might find some episodes that you could argue aren't. But on the whole, I think it fits very well in that category. My favorite Twilight Zone episode. Wow. Um, you know, I... Uh, the, I think of the one where uh, everybody is grotesque except this yes. one person, oh. and they, the grotesque people think that the person who's not grotesque is the one who really is. Yeah, that's that's a really good one. I think the only uh, the only other one that really matches to the oh god, I can't say that. There are a lot of them that are really good. The next, my next favorite one would be uh, Burgess Meredith and Time Enough at Last. The, the mousy man with the thick Coke bottle glasses and all he wants to do is read and all the stuff goes on. He works at a bank and his boss is mean to him and he hates it. He just hates people. He doesn't, he wishes there was time for him just to sit and read. And so he goes into the bank vault and a nuclear holocaust happens and all the people are gone. And he comes out of the bank vault and he looks around and he smiles and he goes, time enough to last. And he's got all his books and then he breaks his glasses and it's, just a fantastic thing to think about as you go through, you know, what, be careful what you wish for. The things that you have are reliant upon other people. It's, it's the kind of story that O. Henry would have written. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and 
that's the kind of stuff you've got to have. You've got to have that kind of thing. And it spawned lots of stuff that have, have kind of go on ghost stories and Disney rides and stuff like that. Fantastic science fiction series. What about you? What's, what do you got? Arguably the best science fiction series of all time is Star Trek. And it certainly fits the description that you were providing about giving you the opportunity to talk about problems that are societal or political, but you talk about it in a futuristic context, and so that makes it possible for you to discuss it. Right, exactly. Without without devolving into demagoguery, right. which is exactly what you want to do. And Star Trek is absolutely one of those. Um, every... Every time I've watched Star Trek, I've, I've watched the original series, I've read the books. I know that's kind of strange, um, but uh, you, you go through and you get this feeling of there's a trust that's inherent in the premise of Star Trek. And that's saying, look, we just got to keep working through this because the future is going to be better. Now there's my a hope. In that. What's your favorite about... episode? Oh, wow, that's a good question. Oh, oh my God, that's oh, that's a tough question, Will. My favorite is Spectre of the Gun, which they wrote at the last minute and spent almost no money on. Right. <laughs> but I thought it was a great episode. My favorite original episode was probably the Yanks and the Combs. The Yangs and the Cones. Do you remember that one? Um, it's they 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 find this planet and they're two tribes who are at war with one another and have been for so long they forget what they're fighting for. And what you find out is that it's based upon capitalists and communists fighting each other, and it's devolved. They've, they've lost the ideology that they're fighting. Now they just fight. Um, and so the Yangs are the, the wild beast and they have the sacred words that no one can read and so on and so forth and come to find out it was the Declaration of Independence. It was the Constitution. It was these things that, that should have made things better, but they lost its meaning in the fight. And that, to me, was a great example of turning a mirror on society at the time. Written in the mid-60s, it was at the height of the Cold War, uh, after Francis Gary Powers and the Cuban Missile Crisis. It's just a fantastic piece of science fiction. You were talking about the books. I want to mention one book and one piece of Star Trek fan fiction. Uh, there was a book, Q and Law. Mm -hmm. and That's a Next Generation. Next Generation. Yeah. Fans of Next Generation will remember Deanna Troy. Absolutely. Okay? Her mother was Loaxana. Yeah. In Q and Law, Q, the supernatural being, Highly pretends evolved. to court Loaxana Troy. <laughs> but then, you know, he mistreats her. Surprise. Right. <laughs> the people in the Q continuum give her Q's powers. And so you run through this series of things where she's just torturing him. She turns him into a tree and chops him down. It's oh. just fantastic. And it, it, it proves the truism that there's nothing worse than a woman scorned. Absolutely. <laughs> then, I love this too, uh, Ensign Rowe, who, if you're a real devoted Next Gen fan, Absolutely. you're going to know Ensign Roe, but, she, you know, otherwise you might not. Right. Anyway, she was not human. and She was Bajoran. She had, uh, you know, her nose had ridges on it. Yeah. Okay? So, anyway, um, <laughs> in it... Uh, there's another ensign, Bailey, and they have a romance, but Bailey won't admit his feelings for her. And so she throws him to the floor and sits on him, and she st starts saying, say it, say it. And he goes, I love your nose. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny to look at that, and, and the technology... We talk about the impact upon society that, that certain things have. Nothing has had more impact on society than the technology put forth in science fiction. And we talk about Star Trek. You know, we think about the transporters and beam me up, Scotty. But think about the handheld communicators. 
Think about, you know, some of the things that, that have been developed and are being developed that are based upon a projected idea of what technology should shoot for. Because that's what it is. It's not like they're they're going from a from a completely separated space and they're they're imagining this thing that's completely new. They're just projecting as to what could happen. And science have, scientists have gone on to make those things happen or versions of those things, which is very powerful. Now, when I was a kid, my favorite science fiction series was Lost in Space. I had a crush on Penny Robinson. And <laughs> And I remember the first time I ever cried <sighs> at anything on TV was an episode of Lost in Space. The Robotoid was this spiffy robot who was better than the Robinson's <clears throat> robot. And the Robinson's robot felt bad, so he tried to kill himself, <sighs> and that made me cry. But um, I, I loved Lost in Space. It's just too bad that it was such a bad show because I can't watch it now. Yeah, it's, it's unwatchable. It's good if you're a you know a ten year old kid, but it doesn't work anymore. But one that has lasted, Doctor Who. Uh, Doctor Who is another BBC creation, but has been in production with a, a lull or two here and there since the 1960s, and it's a very powerful show that that really is about science and it's about the past and it's about you know people and interactions and a wonderful wonderful show um they're they're on peter capaldi as the doctor now but he's in his last year and uh frankly it's it's hard to to, be, to make a synopsis of doctor who because it's just so big i mean you've got you've got arch enemies and you've got um you know, the bad guys and the good guys and the companions and everybody kind of joins in. Um, a fantastic show, a lot of fun, um, will make you cry. It is one of those shows that you can laugh and be laughing in the next episode. You are absolutely in tears. Um, you know, this is the girl who waited and the boy who waited in a couple, you know, a couple uh, seasons ago. Uh, you have this epic love story about two people who were best friends growing up and then they fall in love and nothing seems to work out right, but they always are there for each other. They wait for each other. Um, it's just a fantastic, a poignant stories that, that kind of come through that, that really are exposed by the fact that the doctor is not human. You know, he's a, he's a time Lord. He's different. He's, fairly powerful he has the ability to travel time and space and but he always comes back to humanity because there's something about humanity worth coming back to and that's the story behind another british series that i think is either a spin-off or a sister show if you prefer to call it that to doctor who is Torchwood. absolutely torchwood is great yes uh, torchwood is great torchwood is a lot of fun it it is actually one of the more fun uh television shows that have ever been made because you watch a show and you just don't know what's going to happen now next. i've only seen the first season of that oh so it's fantastic I, I need to, to um, see if i can find the, the there's others. a there's another one i believe called the class that's just started that's also similar to torchwood now there were a couple that i really liked but they only lasted one season right journeyman mm -hmm. and surface yeah. were both really good science fiction shows and then another that only lasted 14 episodes, Firefly. Which is, we talked about it during the movie portion where we talked about Serenity. Firefly is awesome. Yes. It is an awesome show. But don't watch it. You will be so angry that there are no more episodes that you will forever have a chip on your shoulder. Don't watch Firefly. Don't do it. Just don't watch it. You can thank me in your ignorance now. Or you can beg my forgiveness later. That's really the only options you've got. That that actually reminds me of a story. <laughs> of course it does. Um, anyway, when I, when I was uh, considering uh, joining the LDS church, they wanted me to read the Book of Mormon. And um, so anyway, uh, I didn't want to. And... Uh, one of the missionaries said, well, what about if we gave it to you as an assignment? And I said, I, I've never done assignments. I 
took introduction to science fiction because I liked science fiction, but I wouldn't read any of the books <laughs> because they were assigned. You're and, such a rebel, Will. And it, it, the amazing thing about that is I had a 64 average on the tests in that class, and the teacher who later kissed me gave me a B plus. So yeah, uh, we know why that happened. <laughs> so, so anyway. But then, after I told the the, the missionaries oh God, that, I have to have a whole story about that. That's just no, no, that's good. You keep going on this one. All this right. is a good one. He said, "Okay, in that case, whatever you do, don't read the Book of Mormon." Ooh, that's tricky. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's how you do it, right there. Okay, so I'm going to give two that I watched growing up that um, that I really enjoyed watching. Uh, the first is Quantum Leap. Okay. Uh, Quantum Leap is about uh, Dr. Sam Beckett, who steps into a particle accelerator and vanishes into the past, where he puts right what once went wrong. Um, he does so in, in spite of the fact that his memory gets all Swiss cheesed, and he can't figure out, you know, he doesn't always know what's going on. Kind of like the time tunnel from the 60s. Absolutely, yeah. And, and, it's, and it's a great way of looking at these little vignettes of history um, through the eyes of the future. So we look back at the past and we try to understand these things in a little bit better way. Um, a, a fantastic kind of um, chance to put, you know, chance to do right. One of the, you know, one of the big premises behind it is that if we can do good, we must do Gosh, good. Gosh, that reminds me of a show from the 90s that was on like Sunday mornings or something. Um, Voyagers, maybe? They had a device called an Omni that allowed them to time travel. Oh, that's awesome. I don't know if I've seen that show. I've got to figure that out now. Um, and then there was another one about, and I can't remember the name of this either. It, this, it, it, the characters yes, were like a Voyager. bunch of teenagers. Yeah. And, and they were able to like go to other times and things like that. But I don't remember the name of Voyagers it. is what you're talking about. A little bit before my time, but there was only one season and 20 episodes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's that's interesting. 82 83 season. Yeah, that was that was pretty wow. good. Wow. I didn't realize it was that old. Okay, so then the other one that I had was Sliders. That's the other one I was Sliders thinking of. Sliders was fantastic. It okay. was a great show. A great show because it did what all good science fiction should do. And that is reducto ad absurdum. Re reduce reduce the problems that we're seeing today and take them to the most absurd points to shine a light on what it is that the problem actually is. Uh, they, would, they would go to a basically a wormhole, and they would go through the wormhole into these alternate dimensions that things were either slightly askew or monumentally askew. Um, and, you know, there was one where... Um, Quinn, the lead character, uh, who's a brilliant young physicist who created this, but is not doing well in school. Um, he goes to a place where instead of athletes being idolized for their athletic abilities, it is that academians, intelligent people, are idolized for their intelligence. And there are sports that have been developed to show how smart people are. And he's the greatest star in those uh, in that sport in that dimension. It's a great premise. What a fun idea, you know, where you mm -hmm. take away the stigma of being the most smart kid in the class, and make it all of instead to be the the goal, the idea. Now, another show that started out great and quickly devolved into chaos <laughs> because. The writers ruined it. Was Heroes? Yeah. The the first, first season, season. Oh, it was so good. Yes. It was it was straightforward. It was powerful. It was awesome. And then, starting in the second season, they started screwing with the timeline, yeah. and you couldn't tell what was real, what was imagined, and yeah. they just ruined the show. Another superhero type show that was from the eighties, The Greatest American Hero. Uh, was really cool as well. Yeah. No, when, whenever you talk about some of these shows and some of the, the things that they do, it's, you know, you get stuff like the Six Million Dollar Man, which is a fun kind of an action thing, but doesn't re I don't I don't consider that one to be something that really aged well. 
I agree. You know what I mean? That's something that was great then, and it's just kind of gotten stale in that time. And, and we talk about writers possibly ruining something. That is my greatest fear with Westworld. The first season of Westworld on HBO was fantastic. Anybody who knows the movie, uh, knows it's actually a Michael Crichton book um, that talks about a theme park for adults that has robots, you know, animatronic human humanoid robots that run amok and start killing people. And Westworld is one of those areas. It's the Wild West, but it's all robots. Well, the television show um, took that premise and kind of expanded upon it and made it into this big thing and, and uh, a fantastic science fiction show, a powerful science, you know, talking about the, the, the idea of existence and reality and understanding and sentience and this whole, you know, the question that we talk about all the time when we talk about politics is, well, yeah, but, you know, it's not, it's robots that are taking jobs, not people from other countries, generally speaking. Um, and you start, you, you get into the ethics and morality of, well, we can do this without people. Should we do this without people? W at what point do we sacrifice the morality and the ethics of humanity for the greater good of humanity? Or, or is that even working towards a greater good? Westworld brings a lot of those questions at the forefront. And I think it's a very powerful, powerful show. And frankly, it's a lot of fun. I mean, <laughs> robots in the Wild West and, you know, it's just, it's great. It really is a lot of fun. I recommend it, but the second season is pivotal. It might be terrible. The first season was awesome. The second season might be terrible. And, and that's the kind of thing you get when you get Heroes or, you know, some of these other ones. You have such a wonderful first run. How do you ever come back and top that? And the answer is it's very difficult to do. I mean, sometimes it just is what it is. Uh, I'm hoping that they, they can pull it together and make it happen there because that's one that I'm I'm really enthralled with. <laughs> I've got it ready to go, and I watch it every week, and I just can't help it. Anything else? Uh, you know what? No, but if you guys have anything, hit Will or I up on Facebook. Uh, if you're seeing this, it's because we've probably linked it to our Facebook, so you can comment there. Uh, comment on the YouTube uh, section, or hit me up on Twitter, RacerJoeD, um, if you if something tickles your fancy or if I've made you angry or if you've started watching Firefly and want to know how to stop, uh, you let me know and we'll, we'll go from there. Another thing to let us know about, if there's a guest that you would like to have us uh, have on the show, please let us know about that as well. Absolutely. We'd be, we're always looking for new people on here and uh, we want to thank you guys for listening. That brings to a close this edition of the Improbability Engine.